Have you ever been on the phone and someone had you on hold? You were calling, maybe it was an emergency, maybe it was a doctor's appointment, maybe it was a doctor's office, or maybe it was a company, and you were on the phone, and they had you on hold, and you held the phone, and you were waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Have you ever been there? Got another question. Have you called God? Have you prayed to God and God had you on hold and you have been on hold? You've been waiting on God. You've been waiting on God and God has not answered. If you have prayed to God and God has had you on hold, you need to listen to this particular message today. The message today is this. When God says, wait, when God says, wait, get your Bibles. Very interesting lesson. I, I, I promise you this lesson will bless your soul. When God says, wait, and, and you do know that God says, wait, sometimes that's what this lesson is all about. What do you do when God says, wait? I want you to read or uh, listen to a passage of scripture, which will serve as the foundation for what we're talking about right now. It's found in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 17. I want to begin reading at verse number 19. I want to put emphasis on verse number 21. Uh, again, Genesis chapter number 17, beginning at verse number 19. The Bible says this. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall, be, shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee, at this set time in the next year. Underscore that. Don't forget it. I want to read that last verse again. Don't miss this. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee as this set time the next year. God is talking to Abraham. Well, let me tell you about a problem I had many years ago when I first was baptized into the church. I was a young minister, and I was uh, praying to God, and I had prayed to God. And to be honest with you, my brothers and sisters, I, I had a problem. I had a problem with God. I, I don't know about you, and I don't know, you may be a super saint, uh, you may be above uh, me in your Christian journey, but at one time in my Christian life, I had a problem with God. I prayed to God, and seemingly God had me on hold. I was frustrated, 
I was about to throw in the towel. I was about to turn in my resignation, as it were. Yes. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I almost gave up on God. I read in the scriptures. I was reading uh, Second Kings chapter number 20. Read about an incident where King Hezekiah was sick. And the Bible says he was sick unto death. God sent the prophet to him, uh, Isaiah, came to uh, Hezekiah and said, Hezekiah, get your house in order. You are going to die and not live. The Bible says that Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he began to pray unto the Lord. Isaiah now is walking out of the house and now he's in the in the yard and God stopped Isaiah and said, Isaiah, go back and give this message to Hezekiah. I am adding 15 years to his life. And old Isaiah went back, told Hezekiah, God added 15 years to Hezekiah's life. How would you like to have your prayers answered like that? How would you like to uh, pray to God and just in a matter of minutes, God answers your prayer? How would you like that? Then I read about another incident. Old Peter was in prison for preaching the word of God. The disciples came together, and I, I'm in Acts chapter number 12. The disciples came together. You remember that? And they began to pray for Peter's release from prison. Get this now. While they were praying, I said while they were praying, Peter knocked on the door. Peter was released even as they were praying. How would you like for God to answer a prayer like that? How would you uh, like God in the middle of your prayer, in the middle of your request, God answers your prayer? You are, you are ill, you are sick, you are in pain, and you are praying to God to release, uh, to, to cure the pain, or uh, heal the pain in your life. And as you are praying, you are instantly healed. How would you like God to answer your prayer like that? You may be ashamed to admit it, but I, I believe that all of us have been in the situation that I was in. I, I prayed to God because I was taught that God answers prayer. And maybe you are ashamed to admit that you had a problem with God because at one time or another, you prayed to God and God in other words, said, wait, not now. And I bet you had a problem with God. I believe that all of us and all of God's children at one time will have a prayer or a problem with him uh, because many times God does not come when we call him. I, I want to tell you this. Life is all about waiting. I want to say it again. Life is all about waiting. You can never be successful in anything if you don't learn how to wait and you don't learn what to do while you're waiting. Let me say it again. You will never be successful at anything until you learn how to wait and what to do while you're waiting. Life is all about waiting. I bet you are waiting for something right now. Somebody listening to me right now, they're waiting on a good job. You may be a student. You may be waiting on your grades. You may be waiting to graduate. You may be waiting to get married. You may be waiting to have a child. But I will bet you that you are waiting for something. All of us are waiting for something because life, life is all about waiting. 
a couple of years ago, I, I read this, and I was stunned when I read this. I read that the average NFL game, football game, that is televised on TV, the players actually play only 11 minutes. Yes, 11 minutes. The clock says they play 60 minutes and the actual telecast lasts about three hours. But the only playing time only lasts about 11 minutes. There are commercials, there are huddling, there's timeout, there are replays, all of this. But the actual playing time is only about 11 minutes. The other time they are Waiting. Waiting. Can I say this for the third time? Life is all about waiting. Life is all about waiting. And we must learn how to wait. And we as Christians must learn how to wait on God. When God says wait. I want to give you uh, three biblical characters that God said, wait. The first one we have already talked about in our uh, scripture reading to Abraham and Sarah. God said, wait. Abraham and Sarah, God said, wait, wait, wait. Wait, you see what happened was Abraham and Sarah, oh, they wanted a son. Oh, they wanted a son so bad. And God had promised them that, that he would give them a son. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you could just taste it? And oh, they wanted a son. They wanted a son. They wanted a son so bad. And then God comes to them and God comes to Abraham and he says these words in, in our text. Genesis chapter 17, verse number 21. I want you to listen again to what God says to them. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac. Isaac was the true son now, but uh, I'll get to the other part in a few minutes. Sarah, he said, Sarah shall bear thee a son in one year, one year from today. Did you get that? I'm going to answer your prayer in one year. How would you like God? How would you uh, want to pray to God? And God said, I'll answer your prayer in one year. One year from now, I'm going to answer your prayer. That's what he said to Abraham and Sarah. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you can just taste it? Have you ever wanted something so bad that you just, you, you just, you just wanted it? I need to remind you, sometimes God is slow. I, I want to say that again. Sometimes God is slow according to our calculations now, according to man's calculation. I want to read you something that Peter said in, in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9. The Lord is not slack, and the word slack means slow. The Lord is not slow concerning his promise as some men count slackness. Did you get that? God is not slack. Uh, concerning his promise as we count slackness because we count slackness in a different way than God counts slackness or we count slowness uh, in a different way than God counts slowness. I want to say this. God is not on your time. God does not operate on central time. God does not operate on Eastern time, God does not operate on daylight saving time. God operates on eternal time. The Bible says this as well. Second Peter chapter number uh, three and verse number eight. Listen to this. But beloved, 
Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. Did you hear that? That simply said that God is not on our time schedule. One day may be a thousand years with God, or, or one year may be a thousand days with God. God is not on our time schedule. And so sometimes God can be delayed. But this is what happened. Oh, God had promised them a son. And they had been waiting for this son, and they're waiting for this son, they're waiting for this son. And do you not know that Sarah got desperate? Yes, she did. Sarah got desperate. Put a plug right there. Put a plug right there. And I want to talk to you about being desperate. Be very careful when you become desperate. Because something foolish can happen and you can do some foolish things when you become desperate. Sometimes we can do some foolish things. Sometimes we can do some sinful things when we get desperate. And Sarah got desperate. Oh, Sarah got desperate. Do you know what she did? I said, do you know what she did? Do you know what Sarah did? The Bible says this is what she did. She went to Abraham. We're in Genesis chapter 16. You can read it. Genesis chapter 16, beginning at verse number one. This is what she did. She went to Abraham, her husband, and said, I want you to go and sleep with my maid. And I want you to have a child by my maid. She became desperate and she told Abraham, Abraham, go sleep with my maid and we're going to have a child by my maid. She could not wait on God and she could not wait another year. And she said, Abraham, go and have a child by my maid. And do you know what Abraham did? David, Abraham slept with her maid and Abraham impregnated uh, Hagar, her maid, and they had a child. Oh, yes. Oh, but when that happened, I said, when that happened, oh, I tell you, talk, I'm talking about a problem in the house of Abraham. All because they could not wait. They could not wait. Oh, they could not wait. And do you not know Abraham obeyed what Sarah said? He went and slept with her maid. I'm ashamed of Abraham. I said, I'm ashamed of Abraham. I'm ashamed of Abraham because Abraham should have been the leader. Abraham should have, should have said to his wife, honey, I, I love you, but this is not right. Abraham should have said, honey, I love you, but didn't God say that he was going to give us a son? Don't, don't do this. I love you, honey, but let's wait on the Lord. I'm ashamed of Abraham. And I'm ashamed of all other men. I said, I'm ashamed of all other men that allow someone to persuade them to do something that is wrong. And so it was with Abraham. And do you not know what happened? Oh, you need to read it. I said, you need to read it. The Bible says, oh, when the child was born, Ishmael was born. The Bible says, then Haggai, the maid, despised Sarah. She despised Sarah. Maybe perhaps when she slept with Abraham, she thought that she should have been the wife and she was better than Sarah. And and all it was a mess. The Bible says that Abraham began to blame 
uh, Sarah. Sarah began to blame Abraham and they all both began to blame the, the maid and, and all of this. And Sarah kicked out the maid, Haggai, and her son. I tell you, it was a mess. It was an Old Testament drama. It was an Old Testament soap opera. Can I whisper something to you? Oh, a lot of things happen. A lot of bad things happen when you don't wait on the Lord. Let me say it again. When you do not wait on the Lord and you strike out on your own, and you go against God's word. A lot of bad things, a lot of negative things will happen in your life. Oh, yes, it will. And so the moral of this story is wait on God. Don't do anything foolish while you're waiting. Do what God says do. And when he says do it. But I want to transition here now to uh, another person or couple that God said wait. God said wait to Mary and Martha. Do you remember they sent a message to Jesus one day? Jesus was preaching and the Bible said they sent a message to Jesus. The one that you love is sick. And if you read between the lines, what they were saying, Lord, come quickly. Lazarus is dying. Lazarus, your best friend is dying. Lord, come quickly now. Well, I want you to listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says this. That Jesus stayed where he was for two days. I said for two days, he stayed where he was. For two days, he delayed knowing that Lazarus was dying. Now, Jesus stayed where he was. Got a couple of questions. Did Jesus love Lazarus? Oh, yes, he did. The Bible said that. The Bible said that Jesus, he loved Lazarus. Lazarus was his best friend. Another question. Could not Jesus have saved Lazarus if he had gotten there uh, two days? Now, Lazarus died now. Could not Jesus have saved him? Yes, he could. But the question still remains. The question still remains then, why did Jesus stay there for two days and allow Lazarus to die? Why? Let me read this to you. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. In verse number four, I want to read it to you. When Jesus heard that, when he heard that, that is when Lazarus died, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Did you get that? Did you get that? Well, let me explain it to you. What Jesus was saying is that, in essence, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to let Lazarus die. And then I'm going to go and raise Lazarus from the dead. And those who are around and see Lazarus raised from the dead, they might believe and give God the glory. Do you see that? God is an awesome God. Jesus is an awesome Jesus. The reason he delayed is for the glory of God that men might glorify God. Lazarus dies. He raises Lazarus from the grave. And then those who are there might believe on Jesus and they might glorify his father. What an awesome plan. And it worked. Well, I got a question for you. Could it be? The reason why God is waiting, he's waiting that his father might be glorified in your situation, with your problems. He's waiting on your affliction. You've been praying to, uh, to him. You got affliction, you got pains, you got problems, all of that. And God is delaying. Maybe he's delaying. So that God might get the glory. His father might get the glory. This is the idea that when people see you in your afflictions, 
you're still holding on to the hand of God. God gets the glory. And when people see you with your problems and, your, and all of the problems that you're having, you are still holding to God. <coughs> Excuse me. And God gets the glory. Could it be God is getting the glory from your personal afflictions and problems? Could it be? Well, let's end this by saying this. There's another man we want to talk about today. Oh, the man's name is King David. King David. Oh, God said, wait to King David. I don't know if you know this, but King David was anointed king over Israel. I said, King David, he was anointed king over Israel. But do you not know it was several years before he became king over Israel? Yes. He was anointed. And then several years later, he became king. And during that particular time, old David went through some terrible times. You know how Saul tried to kill him. He was uh, on the doorstep of death almost every day. Old David went through some traumatic times during that time. And maybe it was the time that David wrote these words in Psalms 13 in verse number one. Listen to what David wrote. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long, O Lord, how long are you going to wait, O Lord? I've been praying to you. I've been calling on you. O Lord, how long are you going to wait? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Have you ever called upon God and, and God waited and you said, Lord, how long are you going to wait? How long are you going to wait? And so was the situation all with King David. All oh, one day when he was inaugurated as king. Oh, what a blessed day that was. He waited on the Lord. And matter of fact, uh, if you read the story, David did not try to usurp authority from, from Saul. Saul was the previous king, and he did not try to throw Saul out. He did not do that, if you read the story. But he waited on the Lord. Matter of fact, he had several opportunities to take Saul out. He had several opportunities to kill Saul, but he would not do it. He said on one occasion, I would not lay my hands on the Lord's anointed. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait on the Lord. And David did that. David was blessed. Oh, David was blessed. Unlike Sarah and Abraham, David, King David was blessed because he waited on the Lord. I got one last thing to say as we come to a close. Good things come to those who wait. Good things come to those who wait. Listen to this. Listen to this very closely now. Listen to what the Bible says. They that wait on the Lord. I said they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. Not be weary. They shall walk. Not faint. There are a couple of things in that scripture that stands out. First of all, when you wait on the Lord, he will give you strength. The strength of an eagle, the power of an eagle. Not only that will God give you endurance, you shall run and not be weary, the Bible says. When you wait on the Lord, you shall run and not be weary and you shall walk and not faint. The last thing he will give you is perseverance. You won't give up. When you wait on the Lord, strength, power, endurance, perseverance, if you wait on the Lord.